Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Check out this old rundown fiberglass runabout we picked up at a pretty cheap price. Most people wouldn't give it the time of day considering the condition it's in. But in this episode, I'm going to show you how we refurbished this 18 foot boat with no professional help. That's right, we did a full restoration. We replaced the transom, we replaced the floors, we discovered that the boat has moulded fibreglass stringers and the whole boat got sanded back and repainted. And now she's good as new again. So stay tuned if you want to check out this refurbishment. After cutting an inspection hatch into the floor, we discovered that the stringers were actually moulded fibreglass. This was a great discovery. We didn't have to replace the stringers after all. So we ripped up the floor and discarded all the waste. The floor was actually foam filled in some parts, which we had to rip out as well. We salvaged the centre tub compartment, which we could later put back in place. Now we were left with the exposed stringers. The inside received a really good pressure clean and left to dry. After that, Dennis ground down the glue on top of the stringers so the new floor could be laid in perfectly. When we purchased the boat, we knew that we had to replace the transom, but how bad was it? After drilling inspection holes into the transom, we could see that the transom timber was already rotting away. After cutting the original fibreglass with an angle grinder, Dennis proceeded to peel back the original fibreglass to expose the rotting timber. The previous owner had already attempted to raise the transom height to take a 25 inch leg outboard. He drilled five steel pins into the original transom to attach the extension on top. The whole lot had to be removed so we could start from scratch again. Dennis made sure to leave a good inch lip around the transom so that when it came to fiberglassing the new fiberglass on, it had something to stick to. Now that we knew the extent of the refurbishment, we could go and pick up what we needed from our local suppliers. We picked up quality hardwood marine ply from BGB Marine Ply, and we purchased the rest of our fiberglassing and painting needs from local suppliers STS Marine and Marine Trade Supplies, both located on the Gold Coast. Two sheets of marine plier were cut into the new transom shape and given a coat of resin. Dennis glassed over any existing holes in the transom before we installed the first sheet of ply. When working with resins, everything happens really quick. The first sheet was fiberglassed in, wedged and clamped for a tight fit. The second sheet was then laminated to the first. A combination body filler of Q-cell, Cabasol and resin is then filled into any gaps before the whole job is fiberglassed over. Now we could start body filling the fiberglass so that it has a smooth finish for painting. We decided to restore the original centre tub so any cracks and damage were bogged and fiberglassed up. After a quick dry fit, it was ready to be glued back into position. We mixed up a batch of glue using cabasol and resin to make a paste. Anywhere the tub came in contact with the hull, we'd dab a bit of glue to ensure it wasn't going to move. With a bit of fiddling around, the tub was now back in its original position. We decided to use 15mm marine ply instead of the standard 12, just for extra strength. We dry fitted the sheets into position and marked where the stringers were located. Satisfied that the floor fitted perfectly into position, we resin coated the underside of the floor before it was glued down and screwed. The floor was now given a resin coat and the joint on the floor was bogged up. Any time we had body filler made up was a good chance to whack another coat of body filler on the back of the transom. Now that the resin was dry on the floor, this was our last chance to fill any gaps that we wanted to get rid of before fiberglassing. Dennis used filler foam in the biggest gap around the floor. This was then easy to cut away to shape later on. First we fiberglassed in a ribbon of chop where the floor meets the hull.
and then a layer of chop overhanging into the tub. These two compartments are now watertight and act as a buoyancy chamber. Next, a thick 600 gram combination layer of chop and double bias matting was cut to shape and fiberglassed in. The floor was looking sturdy and strong. We were completely satisfied that the floor was sealed. Dennis mixed up a batch of flow coats so we could go ahead and coat the floor. The boat still needed some sort of storage area for life jackets, fuel tanks and bits and pieces. So we sectioned off the centre tub into three compartments. We cut 15mm marine ply in lengths for the lids. We decided not to fibreglass any of this timber because it's removable and can be replaced if it gets damaged down the track. We gave every bit of this timber a coat in flow coat to seal it. Sadly, we lost interest in the project for months after this. But when we finally decided to get back to the project, it was time to sand it back ready for paint. When we purchased the boat, it came with a new windscreen that had never been installed. It was Dennis's job to put this jigsaw together. Once the windscreen was installed, the boat was looking so much more complete. We measured and cut three pieces of gunner rubber for the boat. Dennis ran a bead of Sikaflex on the top edge, the bottom edge and the front edge of the sandwiched hull. The rubber is designed to be a tight fit, so we used a rubber mallet just to hammer it in place. This is certainly a good arm workout because you can see I'm struggling. Here's a little close up just to show you how it's done. All the cuts are finished off with special stainless steel gunner rub corners and then this is finished. Because the boat had been left for months in the weather while we were having a break, the deck and the inside of the hull needed a good pressure clean before we could do the final flow coat. We were now on the home stretch, all we had to do was something with the dash. Dennis had some laminate timber flooring laying around so we used that as the new look dash. And there you have it, the full refurbishment is complete. Because we spent so much time and money on the project there's a few things we couldn't afford to do. The boat deserves a new motor, a new trailer and to be fitted out to its new owner's taste. Although Dennis and I have done some touch-ups and repairs to boats in the past, this was our first full refurbishment we decided to tackle. I recommend if you wish to take on a full boat refurbishment like this one, I suggest picking a boat you plan on keeping because you'll most likely spend more time and more money than you initially planned on the project. Since completing this project, we have already acquired another small 15-foot fiberglass hull for a complete refurbishment, more in-depth than this last one. I've wanted my own estuary boat for some time now, and I'd rather give an old boat new life. If you are interested in reading about this boat refurbishment, I will have a feature article published in the July issue of Australian Boating Magazine. Just go to australianboatmags.com.au. If you've made it all the way through this video and you like what you've seen, please give it a thumbs up and write a comment below. I love hearing from you guys, it inspires me to keep creating. Subscribe to my channel if you like the content, share it with your friends and thanks for the support.